Well, I'm going to explain uh, what I'm doing here. I'm going to just give a kind of a far away look to things um, and just do a real quick scan. I did go into a lot more. Now I'm going to do a demonstration on the coral. So, um, Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to try to do a demonstration on this. Um, I'm going to start from the top. Now the top is a reef triggerfish. Of course, that is my uh, green moray eel. I kind of went into it a lot more. Added some more darks and browns and uh, lumps, and those are the. Um, clown um, trigger fish and that is I did a lot more work on the eel maybe I'll get a little bit closer on this uh, and that's the honeycomb eel so what you saw on part one was just a basic outline now you can see that there are shadows in there and uh, oh, a lot more detail now this one right here there's a lot of detail in this um, this is a titan let me back out and then slowly come in. This is a Titan triggerfish. Now, everything you see here is still about 80%. I will get most of it, everything in the foundation. And uh, keep on working when I see different things. Um, this one is a pink tail um, and it still needs a a little bit of a, a yellow peck fin uh, here and need to work on the lips and this one uh, is a Picasso triggerfish and did some other stuff in here it came in there um, and when, when I magnify it under magnification I will go in there and look for little teeny things that will not be able to be seen from the naked eye Okay, so I'm going to do a demonstration on the coral here. Um, I'm just going to make it somewhat similar to the other side. So I did a demonstration on this before. So it's going to have these kind of circular things, and I'm going to pull the highlights out. Uh, could have been transfer this into brain coral. I'm not going to go into all of them because uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'll just do one more kind of in the midsection. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to pull the color out. So it'll make kind of like a little highlight, which will give it depth and a roundness to it. And it's not a very hard thing. So it's a damp brush going in, uh, pulling out, and I'm not adding more water, I'm just pulling out. Okay, so now I'm going to put some of these quarters just so you get a reference of the size of these. Now coral takes on a lot of different forms, and uh, this is just one. Now I could always add more detail on these forms. Um, a lot of them have a lot of different coral species that are just growing one on top of the other. Um, now. Um, what's going to happen down here is it's going to be a, a trigger fish graveyard. Uh, trigger fish are voracious eaters. They'll eat anything and nothing safe from 
<laughs> them. Um, they'll eat crustaceans and lobsters. Well, same thing. Uh, sea urchins, uh, spiny, uh, long-spined sea urchins, uh, coral. Um, anything is up for grabs, and they will devour it. Um, and like, say, a lobster, they'll take out its, uh, I guess, what it looks like is an antenna-looking thing, but they would just bite it, bite it, so that's their weapon of defense. And then when they get it down to, so that it's not danger, then they start pulling off legs and just work their way through the whole thing. Um, those long um, spine sea urchins, which I'm going to have all through the rocks popping out, I'm going to have like starfish that are kind of half devoured. So it's, it's really going to be a graveyard of stuff in here. Um, but I'm going to do kind of that, um, show how I did the, and, and I can't do, um, all of them. So I'm just going to, now I'm using a cobalt blue and I'm going to go in with, A turquoise. I'm just giving you an example of how the other side got to be. And I'll be going into this with more detail, uh, forming the um, darks and lights. So now it's still wet, so I'm just kind of Blending in, blending in, and each each one of these little things will be taken care of in a now what I'm doing is just overlapping. But I will still go back there and pull out highlights and um, so the next time or the next actual time you will see this is when I'm about 80%. Um, very rarely will anybody ever see 100% because in my world, nothing's ever finished and it's just on hold until I see something that uh, affects me. It could be something minor or it could be changing a whole lot of stuff so just but i just wanted to give kind of um a heads up on the part two of what's happening um how i did a few things how i went into some stuff that um was not uh worked on at the time Um, this Titan has some pretty good detail. I, I, I'll just be working more on the, um, the scaling pretty much and some little things around the eyes. Um, like I said, I went a lot more into the Mori eel uh, and you can see. Okay. So this is getting close to the 80, 90%. I'm going to do a, just a slow scan. Just so you can see the progress. And I'm going to come in with a little zoom on some things. Now the different uh, species in this trigger fish, of course there's a titan and um, a reef. Trigger fish, pink tail, Picasso, um, Niger, 
green nail. Um, anyway, so definitely went back in and did some more detail work. And that means that I'm satisfied to this point, but I know I'm going to see things as I sit on it and just reminisce and look for things and highlights and shadows. Definitely went back into this and added more detail. <clears throat> this is, I guess, two of them that I came in and added more. Um, <clears throat> need to work a lot more on the coral and there's going to be a graveyard down here of a lot of things that uh, trigger fish eat. Um, so um, that is definitely uh, needs a lot more work. So uh, I have some long spine sea urchins kind of here in the corner uh, and some of them look like they're chewed up so that's kind of probably be a lot of parts like that. Maybe clam shells, uh, maybe a few uh, lobster legs or claws or whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm still thinking I don't think I'm going to add any more of the um, trigger fish. Now, if I say that, <laughs> of course, that doesn't mean anything because I'll look at it and say, oh, well, maybe I should put something here, pop out or hiding somewhere or whatever. So that's just the, um, the way I work. Um, okay, so I'm just going to... Just add a little bit more detail in the coral. Um, somewhat of a brain coral, but not really. Um, I like this little opening. Uh, kind of makes it look like there's a doorway. Try to look, look for some different urchins. Um, some of the Starfish definitely need a little bit more work, de de detail. Some of them are kind of, looks like they've been attacked already. Um, and this is the randomness of my work. You know, it's like I see something that maybe may not be in real life, but now it's just for the color uh, aspect of just bringing more life to something. And this is also the fun part, too, because it's like, okay, well, I didn't realize I could have done something there. And I'm going to pull some more colors out. Now, like I said, this is about 80, 90 percent finished for right now. Um, I'm crazy about the detail thing. Now, this is not, even though I am a scientific illustrator and I have put, you know, works out there with, you know, some pretty crazy detail. Um, and most of my work is housed at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles mainly because um, everything you do goes on display or some kind of publication. And, and that's, you know, that's what most artists just live for is to be able to do, to do what I was doing and be published and, you know, have hundreds of thousands of people look at your work, even though they don't know who the people that created those dioramas, um, you know, for them. <laughs> and it's really funny when you see the young kids pass by those dioramas, the idea that uh, people made the foreground, the background, or the paintings and murals in the back is just non-existent. <laughs> Some I've seen kids run down the hall and just say, oh, rhino, oh, uh, grizzly bear, oh, uh, oryx. And they don't even, it's just like, it all makes sense to them. 
you don't really have to be aware of all the things that are involved. But that's that's the youth. Uh, they'll let you know <laughs> if your work is horrible or uh, it doesn't make sense to them. Uh, that way they're really super honest. So I'm just doing that 20 cups of coffee um, type of painting. And now I'm going to come in with um, kind of a small little brush. Let's see, can I zoom in here a little bit? Okay, so now um, this, this is just one flat surface. So now I'm going to try to add more definition to it. So I'm just pulling out the color with a damp brush, not a wet, wet brush, but a damp brush. And if you look, you can see it has kind of lights and darks in there, which gives it more of a 3D effect. You know, sometimes I'll blend it into the rock formations or blend it up. And you can see just by putting those little bits of highlights in there, it just makes it so it's not just a flat surface like this and this. Um, and I'll go into these more with little highlights and make some more definition so that these look like little cylinders or kind of like cylinders. Um, now I don't have to do it to every single one. Um, sometimes a flat looking um, color in an area is more appealing than like this. It's a, just a you know a couple of green things happening here, and they're pulling out the highlights in here and adding stuff. But it's that blue against that ochre that just makes things pop, or it's the red against the green and complementary colors. Um, but anyway, um, talking way too much, so I'm just gonna explain what I did, and um, actually I'm really happy with this one. I. Uh, and sometimes you just live on a square inch. Um, so definitely this is becoming one of my favorites. This was my favorite for a while until I did that. I just like the blue against the orange. This has some insane detail on the scaling. And I know I can still go in further with that. Um, of course, the eel above um, is one of those things that... It's something that, you know, I, I just like doing eels. It's kind of my favorite things. But I'm just going to give you some re reference points. So um, you can see kind of the size. Um, so some are very small. Some up there are smaller. Um, so they're, they're, the range, uh, like I said, but there's going to be a graveyard of things that these trigger fish have eaten. Anyway, Steve Melendres out. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm gonna be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's gonna go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm gonna be doing videos uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.